Overview. An understanding of basic human anatomy and physiology is essential to any person preparing to enter a health occupation. This instructional module is designed to introduce you to the structure and function of the human circulatory system and the interrelationship of the two, and to familiarize with you some of the terms and concepts necessary for understanding of the circulatory system. Learning Objectives At the end of the lesson, I am able to describe the basic properties of the circulatory system, identify the components and function of the circulatory system, explain the different types of circulation, explain how blood is pumped by the heart. Isang mapagpalang araw at umaga para sa ating lahat. Ako nga po pala ang inyong host ngayon. Ako nga si Ariana Julian Galman Cordoba pero mas gusto ko akong tinatawag na A at J. Ano nga ba ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon? Ano ba yung ire-report ng aming grupo? Ah, naniniwala ako na ito yung favorite system ko ng katawan which is ang circulatory system. Bakit ko siya naging favorite? Kasi wala akong choice at ito ang napunta sa men. At magsisimula na nga tayo. Sisimula natin sa etymology at ang magre-report dyan is uh, alam ko o'y tagalipa city pa at naniniwala ako na mahilig siyang kumain at mahilig manood ng TV kaya ang ganda-ganda niya Presenting Ma'am Judy Ann Catalon I am Judy Ann Catalon I'm from Richard Wandy Circulatory system This came from the Latin words heart and vessel It comprises the blood heart and blood vessels the circulatory of the blood has two components. It is the systematic circulations and the pulmonary circulations. It's also called a cardiovascular system or the vascular system. It is the organ system that pump blood to circulate and transport nutrients. The cardiovascular system of the humans are close meaning that the blood never leads the network of the blood vessels. Moving through a circuit, 16,000 of blood from transcirculatory are directly from the thin circulations, from circulator, agent noun, from circulate from a circle from circulus. Circulatory system is recorded from 1862. Now, here Ms. Cordova, our host, her hobbies is to write a journal and a story and she loved to sing. And she's going to discuss the discovery. Ayan po, para sa discovery, bago pa po sumikat si William Harvey, nandito po si Mr. Claudius Galen. At pinanganak po siya noong September 9, AD 129. Uh, when he turned 28, isa po siyang chief physician dyan sa Gladiators Pegamon. Uh, meron, nagkaroon po kasi ng away, ganito yung kwento. Kaya niya discover yung pulmonary circulation. May nagkaroon ng away. Nakakita siya ng dalawang fighters na nakahimlay, naghihingalo. Ngayon, ang ginawa niya, bin, binlaid niya yung libeb. At tapos doon, nag-observe siya kung ano yung nangyayari sa puso at saka sa langas. Kung Ayun, na-discover na doon yung tinatawag na formalali circulation. Actually, nagkamali nga siya sa paniniwala niya noon na yung arterial blood daw na nagmula sa puso at uh, saka yung venous heart na nasa liver ay yun yung lumadaloy sa buong katawan. At doon niya napatunayan ang, ang mga dugo ay nagmumula dito sa ating puso. Pagkatapos ni Mr. Galien, ito naman si Sir Michael Servitus, isa sang Spanish physician at with Mr. Galien's writing, uh, nag-carry out siya ng isang research na doon niya na-discover na ang dugo na sa ating puso ay pupunta sa lungs. At pagkatapos, babalik din ulit mula sa ating puso. 
in English, blood goes from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart again. Na mapapa, sana all ka na lang. Sana all bumabalik. Pagkatapos ni Mr. Servitus, ito naman si Sir Rilando Columbo. Pinanganak siya noong 1550. Dito naman, uh, nalaman niya ang pulmonary circulation through baby section. Ano ba baby section? Ito ginagamit po ang mga animals para sa isang research or experiment dito naman ay nalaman niya ang four artery four valves o ng ating puso na at iisa lang po ang direction dito uh, from right ventricle to the lungs back to the left ventricle and from the and from the left ventricle to the aorta at para naman po sa uh, magpapaliwanag o magre-report ng kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng circulatory system at ano-ano nga ba ang bumubuo dito, isa siya sa magpapatunay na hindi totoong may laman ng puso natin na tao. At ayan na nga, alam ko rin niwala ko na siya ay mahilig makinig ng music para sa kanya is music is life at mahilig din siyang manood ng mga movies. Nagmula pa sa Mandaluyong City, Ma'am Jonalyn Bernardo. Thank you, Ma'am Cordoba. Good day, everyone. I am Jonalyn P. Bernardo. I am going to discuss the circulatory system, what is circulation, and what made up the circulatory system. Our circulatory system, also known as your cardiovascular system, is made up of heart and blood vessels. It works to transport oxygen and other nutrients to all the organ, carbon dioxide, and other waste products and tissue in your body. It also works to remove it. Having a healthy circulatory system is vital to our health and well-being. Continue eating as we develop deeper into the circulatory system, its function, and what we can do to keep our heart and blood vessels in good shape. What is circulation? It's just under 30 seconds your blood move circulates through your entire body. It's reached every one of your trillions of cells. What made up the circulatory system? The circulatory system is made up of several parts, including our blood, heart, and blood vessels. At ayan, maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Bernardo. At tunay nga ang mga pangitain, muling nagbabalik, muling magbabalik si Ma'am Catalon para sa kanyang report patungkol naman ito kung ano nga ba ang blood ano-ano ba ang katangian nito? Ano ba ang function nito? Bakit ito importante sa ating katawan? Siya ang sasagot niya. Ano? Ma'am Catalan, pasok! So, blood. Blood carries things to each cell that are needed. These things include oxygen and nutrients. In exchange, the blood picks up waste from the cells including carbon dioxide, heat, excess water, and also it is the organ system that pump a blood to circulate and transport nutrients. The heart pump blood throughout the body. It's a closed system of tubes. These tubes that carry the blood are called vessels. There are three types of blood vessels, the arteries, veins, and the capillaries. When it's called the arteries, it is the blood vessels that deliver oxygen-rich blood from the heart to the tissues of the body. When we say veins, it is returns blood to the heart. And next, when we say capillaries, it is the tiny blood vessels connecting arteries to veins. The word blood when it comes in our mind, what is blood? So, blood is fluid connective tissue. Blood is composed of 55% plasma and 45% form elements. So, it has uh, three types. The red blood cells, white blood cells, and the platelets. 
cells is suspended in the plasma, blood is considered fluid connective tissue. It is the only fluid to net tissue in the body. Number two, blood provides the body cells with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Blood absorbs oxygen from air into the lungs. Body absorbs oxygen from air in the lungs. It transports the oxygen to cells throughout the body. It removes waste carbon dioxide from the cells. In the lungs, the carbon dioxide moves from the body to the air and it is exhaled. Blood transforms nutrients and hormones. It is a large role in the digestion and endocrine system functions. Digested nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream through capillaries in the villi that line the small intestine. But also blood transports some hormones secreted by endocrine system, glands to largest organ and tissues. The nutrients include glucose, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and also the fatty acids. Next is the blood regulate body temperature. So it is absorbed and distributes heat throughout the body. It helps to maintain homeostasis through the release or conservations of warmth. Blood vessels expand and contract. When they react to outside organisms, such as bacteria, and to the internal hormone and chemical changes. These actions move blood and heat closer to farther from the skin surface when heat is lost. Platelets, also called thrombacids, thrombac Next is platelet clot blood at the site of injury. When a blood vessel tears, platelets and plasma proteins work together to stop blood. Platelets, also called thrombocytes, clap and form a plug in the damaged area. The protein form threads called fibrins to complete the platelet, plug, or clot. Next, the blood brings waste products to the kidneys and liver. It is the blood transport waste substances to the organs that remove and process them for eliminations. Blood flows into the kidneys through the renal arteries and out through the renal veins. The kidneys filter substances such as urea or uric acid and creatinine out of the blood plasma and into the ureters. The liver also removes toxins from blood. During digestions, it cleans blood that has been enriched with vitamins before sending it back out to the rest of the body. Next, the red blood cells are the most numerous living cells in blood. The blood and the red blood cells. The blood has a 55% plasma and 45% form elements. The red blood cells has 45% it also called erythrocytes. Their primary function is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the cells of the body. The red blood cells are disc shaped. They are flexible and bioconcave, or flat and round, with the press centers. The next types of blood is the white blood cells protect the body from pathogens. White blood cells called leukocytes, the disease fighting components of blood. They account for just 1% for circulating blood but multiply during infection or inflammation. There are five types of blood 
white blood cells. The neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. The neutrophils are the most abundant, comprising 60% to 70% of all white blood cells. So now, thank you for listening. I hope you understand the topic that I discussed. So once again, I am Judy Andy Catalon. I'm from BZ1. Thank you. To discuss the components of blood, let's welcome Ms. Kirby. Components of the blood. The first is the red blood cells. So what is red blood cells? It is known for the red bright color. Red cells are the most abundant cells in the body or in the blood accounting for about 40 to 45 percent of its volume the shape of a red blood cell is a biconcave disc with flattened center in other words both faces of a disc have shallow bowl like indentations production of red blood cells is controlled by erythropoietin a hormone produced primarily by the kidneys red blood cells start as immature cell in the bone marrow and after approximately seven days of maturation are released into blood streams unlike many other cells red blood cells have no nucleus and can easily change shape helping them fit through the various blood cells blood vessels in your body however while the lack of a nucleus through smallest blood vessels Damaging a cell's membrane and depleting its energy supplies, the red blood cells survives average on only 120 days. Next is white blood cells. So what is white blood cells? White blood cells protect the body from infection. They are much fewer in number than red blood cells, accounting for about 1% of your blood. The most type of white blood cell is the neutrophil, which is the immediate response cell and accounts for 55 to 70 percent of the total white blood cell count. Each neutrophil lives less than a day, so your bone marrow must constantly make a new neutrophil to maintain protection against in uh, infection. Uh, next is plasma. Plasma, the liquid component of blood, is called plasma. A mixture of water, sugar, fat, protein, and salts. The main job of the plasma is to transport white the blood cells throughout your body along with nutrients, waste products, antibodies, clot clotting proteins, chemical messengers, as such as hormones and proteins that help maintain the body fluid balance and last but not the least is the platelets also called thrombocytes thrombocytes unlike red and white blood cells platelets are not actually cell but rather small preg fragment of cells platelet helps blood clotting process by gathering at the site of an injury injury sticking to the lining of the injured blood vessels and forming a platform on which blood coagulation can occur. This result in formation of fibrin clot, which covers the wound and prevents blood from leaking out. Fibrin also forms an initial scaffolding upon which new tissues form, thus promoting healing. Uh, number two is where is blood made up in the body? Uh, the answer is the blood cells. Uh, blood cells are made up in bone marrow. The bone marrow is the, is the soft, spongy material in the center of the bones. It produces about 95% of, bod of body's blood cells. Most of the adult bones, bone marrow in the pelvic bones, breast bones, and the bones of the spine. Secondly is the plasma. The blood that runs through the veins, arteries, and capillaries is known as whole blood, a mixture of about 55% plasma and 45% of blood cells. 
Maraming maraming salamat para sa akin at dadako naman tayo sa pinaka-climax ng aming report. Kasi dito na talaga mapapatunayan na walang lamang tao ang ating puso kundi ang laman lang nito ay puro dugo. Ayan. Huwag kayo naniniwala sa mga jowa niya sinasabi ikaw lang ang laman ng puso niya kasi hindi tao yan talaga. Ayan, naghahanda at naniniwala ako na siya ay mahilig Manood ng anime or diehard man siya nitong anime, naniniwala din akong siya ang nag-iisang lalaki sa amin. Nagmula pa sa Zamboanga City, Sir Kizo Cepeda. Hi, Cepeda. And today we are going to talk about the heart. And what is the heart? Is this where our feelings are coming from? Well, no. Uh, feelings are coming from the hypothalamus. So if you ever get up to someone and tell them, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> Instead, you love them from the bottom of your hypothalamus. But anyways, today we are going to talk about the heart. So, what is the heart? A hollow muscular organ that pumps blood in order to circulate it into the entire body. So, let's go to the next definition, which is actually a lot more uh, defining which is actually a large muscular pump and is divided into two halves, the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So the right-hand side of the heart is responsible for pumping the oxygenated blood to the lungs. The left-hand side pumps oxygenated blood around the body. Each side of the heart consists of an atrium and ventricle, which means in total we have four chambers. So um, the atria or plural form of atrium, are where the blood collects when it enters the heart. So this is the first chamber on each side. And the uh, ventricles pump the blood of, out of the heart to the lungs or around the body. This is the second chamber. Okay, the septum separates the right hand and the left side of the heart. So this is the wall, thin wall in the middle that separates the right hand side and the left hand side. Another um, used for septum is our nose. You see our left hole and the right hole. And in the middle, that's called a septum. So the tricuspid valve is located between the right atrium and right ventricle and opens due to a buildup of pressure in the right atrium. So these are valves. We are going to discuss this later on. Bicuspid valve is located between the left atrium. So bicuspid is on the left, tricuspid is on the right side. So what I'm going to talk about is right here. And as you can see, it's kind of complicated if you look at it like, what are all these vines or veins or arteries? What are all these? It gets confused. But then you, when you look at it in a colored way, that is why we have two colors. We have red and blue. The blue ones are deoxygenated blood. So as you can see here, etong kulay blue na to, na malaki, ang tawag dyan ay vena cava, which is nasa right side. Meron tayong superior at inferior. Ang superior, nagagaling sa taas, yung deoxygenated blood. Tapos inferior, yung mga deoxygenated blood na nagagaling sa ilalim ng bottom part of our heart is pupunta doon. So pupunta siya sa atrium. Pagkatao sa atrium, which is the first chamber, pupunta sa second chamber, which is the ventricle. Pagkapunta sa ventricle, pupunta sa pulmonary valve, at pupunta sa lungs, kukuha siya ng oxygen. Ngayon, pag nakuha na yung oxygen, saan siya pupunta? So, pupunta siya dito sa pulmonary veins. Ito sa right, right hand side, I mean left hand side na siya, which is yung magiging kulay pula na. As you can see, uh, nakikita nyo yung dalawa sa puso. Yung dalawang tubes or veins, dun pupunta yung oxygenated blood na nanggaling sa lungs. So pupunta siya dun sa left atrium. Pagkapunta sa left, eh, left atrium, yun ng first chamber niya, pupunta siya sa um, left ventricle. And then after the left ventricle, it will pump into the aorta or the arc which is also the biggest of all the arteries. <clears throat> so, um, 
dalawa lang naman yung arteries pero pero etong aorta is nakikita niyo siya may pa curve siya di ba tapos meron siyang tatlong tube sa taas yung tatlong tube na yon is yung oxygenated blood is pin spread niya sa taas dito siya sa ulo yan sa kamay i mean basta dito sa upper body parts and then yung pababa na yon nakikita niyo di ba pa curve siya And then, pag tinignan nyo, sa ilalim, ayun yung, ano niya, yung parang pagpatuloy niya, yung like, it curves down, then behind the heart, then pupunta sa ilalim. Tapos, yung oxygenated blood is pupunta sa ilalim. Like that. And then, when the oxygenated blood goes all around the body, it gets used, and it becomes the oxygenated bloody, uh, body, <laughs> or blood, the oxygenated blood, <laughs> and then mapupunta siya ulit sa vena cavus natin sa right side. Ito. Ito, simple to, pero hindi siya ganyan. Hindi ganyan yung katawan natin, ha? Pero, ganito yung uh, process or cycle. Okay, so, ito yung cycle or yung kung paano yung dugo is uh, pupunta sa entire body natin at paano siya nagsacycle. So, ito yung sinabi ko kanina, yung kulay blue and yung kulay red. Kulay blue, deoxygenated blood. Wala siyang oxygen. Tapos yung red, oxygenated blood siya. So, siya yung kumakalat sa katawan para magamit yung oxygen para magawang energy. And para tayo maging live and stuff because our body needs oxygen. So, ang uh, pagsisimula tayo sa deoxygenated blood. Kasi, okay. So, eto yung vena kiva. Ito, nakikita nyo ba? Yan. Ito yung dalawa. This. Two parts. And it goes inside the atrium, which is the first chamber. Tapos pagpunta niya sa first chamber, pupunta siya sa second chamber, which is the atrium. Tapos papanik siya doon sa pulmonary arteries. And then pupunta siya sa lungs. Pagpunta niya sa lungs, is kukuha na siya ng oxygen. Tapos magiging oxygenated blood na siya. Then the oxygenated blood will go back into the heart. And yung pulmonary veins, pupunta siya sa uh, left atrium. Ayan, sa left atrium. Ito na siya. Tapos, pag napunta sa left atrium, pupunta siya sa uh, left ventricles. So, bakit ba meron tayong valves? Yung nakikita natin na flaps, ito. Yan, may meron flaps dito. Kung bakit meron tayong atrium, tsaka meron tayong ventricle. So, atrium siya, di ba? Atrium. Tapos, mag-open siya ng flap, tapos kinoclose niya, para hindi mag-backflow yung dugo. Bale, dito ka lang, sabi ng ano, valves. Huwag ka nang bumalik. Oh, huwag ka nang bumalik. Dapat ganun tayo eh. Yun, dapat one way lang siya. So, hindi siya pinapabalik. So, uh, yung valve is nagbubukas siya, para lang yung dugo ay pumunta sa isang part na yun. Gets? So, bale, ano siya? Stop and go. And no more going back. So, back on the track, pag nakuha na yung oxygenated blood, pumunta sa left atrium, tapos left ventricle, pupunta na siya sa aorta. Yung curve kanina na arc. Tapos yung curve na arc na yon is uh, magsaspread siya sa buong body natin, uh, supplying oxygen everywhere, every part of our body, hanggang mapunta siya sa mga capillaries natin, sa ating buong katawan. And when it becomes deoxygenated, pag nagamit na yung oxygen, babalik siya ulit sa vena cava. So, ganun lang siya umikot. Bale, deoxygenated blood, mapupunta siya sa lungs para kumuha ng oxygen, pupunta sa puso para kumalat sa buong katawan, tapos babalik ulit sa puso. So, that is all. I hope you uh, understood what I've said. And kung may tanong lang kayo, please don't be afraid to uh, DM or PM me. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye! Ayan, ang dami na nga po nating napapatunayan na makatotohanan talaga. At dadako naman po tayo sa blood vessel. Ano ba ang function nito? Saan ba ito gamit? Ano ba yung ginagawa nito sa ating katawan at yan, naniniwala ako na para siyang si Ma'am 
Catalon na hashtag music is life na hindi siya makakatulog ng walang musika sa kanyang buhay. Kapag walang musika, ang lungkot-lungkot ng buhay, naniniwala din ako doon. Nagmula pa siya sa Davao City. At, Ma'am Erica Jane, pasok! Blood vessel, a component of the circulatory system such as artery, capillary, or vein that carries blood. Blood vessel is a tube through which the blood circulates in the body, meaning may tinatransfer sila ng mga bagay na needed ng katawan natin like oxygen and nutrients. And the blood vessels is a tubular structure. So ang ating blood vessels is parang tubo na nagkikeri ng blood through the tissues and organs natin. Then we have here the three main types of blood which are the platelets that help the blood to clot, red blood cells carry oxygen, white blood cells. These cells come in many shapes and sizes that are vital to the immune system and the body fight of infections. So yung mga blood na to, types of blood, ay nagko-contain ng hormones, fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and gases. Next is arteries. Arteries. Is blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart to the rest of the body and their shape is like tubes. Arteries is also like pa tube shape na nagdadala ng oxygenated blood away from the heart. Meron siyang three, la- three layers which is the intima consists of endothelial cells. Second is the media which consists of smooth muscle and elastic tissues. The third is the adventitia, which is consists of collagen, fibers, and ito yung pinakatikas layer of artery. We have two division of circulation. Number one is systematic circuit. It refers to the path that carries oxygenated blood from left ventricle through the arteries and capillaries. So, ang path or way ng Systematic circulation is to carry oxygenated blood from the left ventricle, while yung pulmonary circulation is yung path niya is to maglabas ng deoxygenated blood sa right ventricle of the heart. In addition, arteries divided into two bays on the material of their tunica media or middle layer. Number one, elastic arteries. It contains elastic tissue in the tunica media that allows to maintain a constant pressure. Number two, muscular arteries. Muscular arteries naman contain smooth muscle that allowing involuntary control. Next, arta. The largest artery in the body, it begins at the top of the left ventricle, the heart muscular pumping chamber. It receives blood directly from the left ventricle or main pumping chamber and divided into four parts which is ascending aorta, aortic arc, tarsic aorta, and abdominal aorta. Capillaries. The primary function of capillaries is the exchanging of materials between the blood and the tissue cells. This is the smallest and most numerous of the blood vessels. The role of capillaries is to exchange most nutrients, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, diffused readily through capillary cells' membranes or some small molecules and proteins. Capillaries is connected in arteries and veins. We have the three types of capillaries. Number one is continuous capillaries. Continuous in the sense that the endothelial cells provide an uninterrupted lining and they only allow smaller molecules such as water and ions. Continuous capillaries is actually the one that we see most commonly through the body or throughout the body. Number two, fenestrated capillaries. Leakier than continuous capillaries, it contains small pores in addition to small gaps between cells in their walls that allow for the exchange of larger molecules. Fenestrated capillaries has a little holes or we call them fenestrations and these do not have glycocalyx 
that's covering inside. Number three, sinusoid, a type of capillary that have a wide diameter and can be found in the liver, spleen, lymph nodes, and bone marrow. Often found in the liver and are the largest ones and have a lot of intercellular cleft space. Next, we have veins. Veins, vessels of circulatory system that support circulation by conveying blood to heart and blood flowing to transport nutrients and oxygen and water to cells throughout the body. So, veins transport the oxygenated blood away from organs and tissues to the heart. So, kanina nabanggit ko na yung arteries ay nagkikary ng oxygenated blood. Ngayon naman, yung vein, ang dinadala, ang dinadala niya is the oxygenated blood para, para di kayo malito. We have here the four types of veins, which are pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins are blood vessels that transfer freshly oxygenated blood from the lungs to the atria of the heart. Pulmonary veins are carrying also the oxygenated blood. And systematic veins carry the oxygenated blood only from the rest of the body. So yung systematic veins naman, nagkikari siya ng the oxygenated blood only. And kung mapapansin nyo, medyo hawig sila ng functions ng arteries and veins. The third, superficial veins. Are located close to the surface of the skin and are not located near a corresponding artery. Superficial veins, it is for cooling the body to hot temperature. The last type of veins, deep, deep veins, are located deep within muscle tissue and are typically located near a corresponding artery with the same name. So, yung deep veins, the role of this is to propelling blood toward the heart. Next, we have vein size. A vein can range in size from 1 mm to 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter. So, ang size ng vein ng isang ordinary human can range 1 mm to 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter. And ang tawag sa smallest veins in our body is venules. Structure of vein. Gaya ng sa artery kanina, we have tunica adventitia or externa. The outer layer is connective tissue, which is the outer layer. Tunica media is the middle layer and the tunica intima, which is the inner layer. Next, superior vena cava. Is the superior of two venae cavae, the great venous trunks that return the oxygenated blood from the systemic circulation to the right atrium of the heart. The, limp, the superior vena cava, it is located in anterior right superior and medis, mediastinum, coursing towards the right atrium of the heart and the return ng the oxygenated blood from the body. Next, the lymphatic system. is a network of tissues vessels, and organs that work together to move colorless, watery fluid called lymph back into your circulatory system. Some 20 liters of plasma flow through your body's arteries and smaller antrial blood vessels and capillaries every day. The lymphatic system is like a drainage or drainage system na nagre-remove ng sobrang fluid galing sa ating body tissues and binabalik ito to the blood bloodstream and ito ay subsystem ng circulatory and immune system the last lymphatic circulation lymphatic circulation fluid that is forced out of the blood stream during normal circulation is filtered through lymph nodes to remove bacteria Lymphatic circulation is the circulation wherein the fluids that containing infection is actually fighting white blood vessels and also to transport lymph. At para 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 po sa fun fact. 
And bibigyan lang po tayo ng nakakatong bilang ni Ma'am Katalon. Kasi panay tayo seryoso, panay tayo sa katotohanan. Dito man tayo sa mga katatawanan at sa mga nakakapagpasayang bagay. Because I believe that laughter is the best medicine. Hiniwala ko doon. Kung hindi at kung oo, panoodin mo pa rin to wala kang choice. The fun fact about cerebral guard system. Number one, red blood cells lack of cell nucleus which allow the cells to carry more oxygen through the body. Number two, human and most animals have varying speed of red blood cells. Darker cells lack oxygen and are heading to heart and lungs to pick up more oxygen. Number three, there are no blood vessels in the cornea. Blood vessels would obstruct your vision. So instead, nourishment for the cornea cells come from the tears. Number four, the weather outside of the body controls the size of the blood vessels. In warmer weather, the blood vessels expand to release heat, while they constrict in colder weather to retain heat. Number five, laughter really is the best medicine. It triggers endorphins to be released in the body, reduce stress, and increase blood circulation. Number six, women tend to have faster heart rates than men. This is likely related to the fact that they are usually smaller than men. Seven, your heart can beat for several minutes outside of the body until it's run out of energy. This is because it produces its own electrical signals. Number eight, during the average lifetime, the human heart will beat 2.5 million times. It will average 70 to 80 beats per minute. Number nine, a single droplet of blood contains around 5 million red blood cells. Number 10, Red blood cells live for approximately 120 days. They are constantly being replaced by the bone marrow. Number 11. Asian Egyptians believed that the heart was the center of the body rather than the brain. The heart was preserved carefully after death while the brain was discarded. At dyan nga po nagtatapos ang aming report at naniniwala po ako na itong report na to ay aming tunay na pinaghandaan at Nawa po kayo po ay may napulot na kaalaman at mga katotohanan. At dyan na nga po, tinatapos ko na ako nga po muli si Ariana Julian Galman Cordoba. Kabahaging aking mga kagrupo mula sa Bised Wandi at naniniwala sa kasabihang ang pag-ibig ay parang laro. Matuto kang makipaglaro kung ayaw mong ikaw ang mapaglaroan. And I thank you.